In this lesson, I'm going to introduce permutations and factorial notation. Permutation is a distinguishable arrangement of objects in a definite order. For example, objects A and B have two permutations. They can be ordered AB and BA. Both of those count as different um, orders or different arrangements. Factorial notation is a concise representation of the product of consecutive descending natural numbers. So for example, if the number is n factorial, then n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, and you're multiplying those. So if it was 5 factorial, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. When we want to multiply all the natural numbers from a particular number down to 1, we can use factorial notation to indicate this operation. The symbol is an exclamation mark. This notation can save us the trouble of writing a long list of numbers. We define 0 factorial equal to 1. In your graphing calculator, you can find the factorial notation. So if we pull that out, it's under math. So if we go to math, and then go over to PRB, which is your probability menu, and you can see number 4 here. You can either arrow down or type in 4 is the factorial. And I need to be on a, sorry, clear page. So if I wanted that 5 factorial, so math, probability, 4, so 5 factorial, enter. And that's the same as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Gives you the same answer. So instead of doing that each and every time, just type in 5 factorial. Okay? That's very much like the example one here. Determine the number of arrangements that six children can form while lining up to drink. Well, here's your six, six <laughs> different um, spots in line. For the first spot in line, there's six kids that can line up, but one of them has lined up. So there's five left to line up, four different kids three different kids, two different kids, and then there's only one kid left and they have to stand at the back. So you're multiplying those together to give you the answer. Or we could write this as 6 factorial. Either way, when you put that into your calculator, I'll let you try that, you should get 720. Now, if I pull out my calculator here, I just did five, 5 factorial, now I'm doing 6 factorial. If I put second, enter, it'll give me the last thing that I did. If I hit second, enter again, it'll give me the previous one. And I can just arrow over and change that to a 6. And sometimes that saves you time, right? Now I wanted to do 7 factorial, I could go 7, enter, or second, enter, and put in a 7 or an 8 or whatever value I want instead of going back through the menu. So that's just a little tip for you if you wanted to use that. And that will happen with anything you do. So if you type a number in wrong, second enter, you could just change that number really quickly. All right. It's important to know where this is coming from. So if you evaluate these, okay, if you look at 10 factorial, that's like what we just did. That would be the same as 10. I'm going to use a dot instead of the multiply symbol, times 9, times 8, times 7, times 6, 5, four, three, two, one. Do we always have to go down to one? Yes. Okay. And that, if you put that in your calculator, you get 3,628,800. And you could do it either way. Much easier to put in the 10 factorial. Now this other one, 12 factorial, I'm going to show this to you two different ways. The first way, just punch that into your calculator right now. And I would anticipate if you do that, you're going to get a wrong answer. So why are you asking me to do that? Have a look. So if I go 12 factorial and I go into the oops, math function, go over to probability 4, and I'm going to divide that by 9 factorial times 3 factorial. and hit enter, that's the wrong answer. The answer to this is 220. So why might be getting, I be getting an incorrect answer? Well, it has to do with the brackets, okay? When we see the question, it's understood 
that it's 12 divided by and then 9 times 3 factorial in the, in the numerator, or sorry, the denominator in the bottom. But when we look at it in the calculator, the calculator is taking the 12 factorial divided by 9 factorial and taking all of that and multiplying it by 3 factorial. We want to keep that 3 factorial in the denominator. How do we do that? Use brackets. So if I go second enter and do this again, I'm going to go insert, and I'll put a bracket here, and then put a bracket at the end, and now I'm getting the answer I want. So make sure that you remember to put brackets around that denominator, okay, and you'll get the answer of 220. So what if you wanted to do this by hand and you didn't want to use the calculator? You should see where this is coming from because this is going to lead us to the next question that we're doing. So the 12 factorial is 12 times 11 times 10 times 9. And you could keep going times 8 times 7 times 6 all the way down to 1. Or you can just stop there and put 9 factorial. Why? Why might I stop there? Well, I can see that there's a 9 factorial also in the denominator. So if I put that in there, I can actually cancel that out and be left with 12 times 11 times 10 and 3 times 2 times 1. And those values you can either do in your head, um, numerator and denominator separate, or punch it into your calculator and you'll still get that 220. Okay, and if you don't believe me, write it all out. Write the 9 factorial all out, the 9 factorial and the denominator all out, and the 3 factorial, and you can see what numbers cancel, and you should be left with the same thing I have. So let's take a look at the example I was referring to, example 3. This says, simplify where n belongs to the natural numbers. What are natural numbers? Those are your counting numbers that you started learning counting on. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 no zero, no negatives, right? No decimal places. So simplify. You're going to remember some of your rules and your, and your um, math from grade 10 and 11. Here it says no, n plus 3 times n plus 2 factorial. So the factorial is only referring to the second set of brackets, okay? Not the whole thing. If they wanted it to be for the whole thing, they would have to have another set of brackets in there, okay? So what does this look like? Well, this would be n plus 3 times n plus 2. Now, with our other ones, like if I had 10 factorial, it was 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, right? And I'm constantly decreasing the value by 1 as I'm multiplying. But what does that mean here? n plus 2 factorial. So what's a value that's smaller than n plus 2 by 1? So n plus 2 minus 1 would just be n plus 1. Okay, and if I want to go smaller than that, that would be n plus 1 minus 1 would be n, and then smaller than that would be n minus 1, and you keep going until you get to 2 and 1, right? You just keep going. Well, re-look at this. n plus 3, n plus 2, n plus 1, n, n minus 1. Well, wouldn't that be the same as saying n plus 3 factorial? And it would. So you're looking at this, and we tacked on 1 greater than at the beginning here. Well, then that just means it's n plus 3 factorial, not n plus 3 times n plus 2 factorial. And if I put another a coefficient in front of n plus 4 times n plus 3 and then n plus 2 because it keeps going all the way to 1 that would just be n plus 4 factorial and so on. Okay so that's the answer for a. What about b? If you look at b, okay we've got n plus 1 factorial in the numerator and n minus 1 factorial in the denominator. So n plus 1 if I start decreasing that would be times n times n minus 1, and it's tempting to keep going, but what is in my denominator? You always want to look there and see what's there, because that's going to tell you where to stop in the numerator. And I see an n minus 1. Wonderful, that means I can cancel it out. So n minus 1 factorial in the denominator, I can cancel those out, and I'm left with n 
plus 1 times n. And at this point you can distribute, so n times n would be n squared, 1 times n would be n. And that would be your final answer because you're just simplifying. It's a little bit more algebra than we're used to seeing in applied, but necessary, okay? Let's take a look at example four, and this is our last example for this lesson, and then we'll do some practice, okay? So here, the difference between example four and example three, if you have a look, maybe you have already seen it, is that we've got an equal sign. We've got equals a value. So not only are you simplifying the um, factorials, but you need to simplify it to a point where now you can solve for that n. What is that n actually equal to? In this case they're saying that n belongs to the integers, okay, so positive and negative values and uh, 0, okay, and for these types of questions, put a little note here, you must check your answers or your solutions. Why? Because not all of the solutions will work. When you have especially something in the denominator, not all values will work. Okay, so let's start by um, simplifying. We've got n factorial, and again, look at the denominator so you know where to stop. So n, one smaller than n would be n minus 1, one smaller than that would be n minus 2, one smaller than that, and at that point you're yelling at me, no, don't go further, because you can see in the denominator I've got an n minus 2 factorial. So that's where I'm going to stop. n minus 2 factorial here is equal to 90. That looks great. Let's cancel that out. Okay, and I've got n times n minus 1 is equal to 90. All right, what do we do next? Distribute the n. So I've got n squared minus n is equal to 90. But I can't solve until I've got the 90 on the other side. So I'm going to subtract 90 from both sides. I've got n squared minus n minus 90 is equal to 0. At this point, you're using your grade 10 factoring. How did I see that? Well, I saw that this was a quadratic. Do you remember from grade 11 applied or grade 11 pre-cal? Depending on the course you took, that when you have a power of 2 there, n squared, and then n, and then the number, so ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, that's when you're solving for your roots. Right? And we can do that graphically. We can do that um, using our calculators. We can do that whatever way you want. You could factor. Either way, that's what you're finding. So if you're okay with factoring, you can go ahead and do that. But if you're used to putting it into your calculator, then go ahead and do that part. I've done that already. And I've put in y equals, so I've got instead of n, I put x. So x squared minus x minus 90. And then you need to adjust your window so that this will fit. Okay, because when you hit trace, you're not going to see it right away, or zoom 6, you're not going to see it right away. So if you hit trace, you can get your graph in there. How do you find your zeros? Second, trace, and you're going to go to your zeros. You're going to go left bound, enter, right bound, enter, enter again. And I've got negative 9 there. So that's one of them, is negative 9. So n is equal to negative 9. And the other one, second trace, 0, left bound, move over here, enter, right bound, enter, enter again, and you've got 10. Now if you want a refresher on how to do those calculations and checks in your calculator, make sure you come and talk to me and we can go over that together. Okay. So we've got our two n values, we've got negative 9 and 10, but do both of these solutions work? Let's check. How do we check? Substitute. So let's check n equals negative 9. So I've got negative 9 factorial divided by negative 9 subtract 2 factorial, 
is equal to 90. That would be negative 9 factorial divided by negative 11 factorial is equal to 90. And at this point, you should be recognizing that we're going to have no solution. How come? Well, go ahead and try to put that in your calculator, and you'll see that you're going to get an error. Why? Well, we overlooked something at the beginning. Let's go back. When they defined the factorial notation, right? That the product of consecutive descending natural numbers. Remember when I was talking about those natural numbers? Natural numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. They're your counting numbers. No decimals, no um, negatives, right? No integers, just your natural numbers. So if you go to the example we're looking at, well, we've got negatives in there. And by definition, factorial doesn't work. So we can write that in there. By definition, that factorial is only for natural numbers. So a negative number, at whatever number that is, factorial, won't doesn't have a solution. Okay? So even though we're, it's tempting to go like this and say, yeah, negative 9 and 10 are both solutions, we can see right now that that's not the case. So put an X through that. I still need to see it, so that was probably not great. Right? So you still want to see what the value is. I want to see that you've tried that. But I also want to see the check, the reasoning for why that's not a solution. Is 10 a solution? Let's check. So for N equals 10, we would have 10 factorial divided by 10 minus 2, all factorial, equal to 90. So 10 factorial divided by 8 factorial. You could put that in your calculator and you'll get that, yes, 90 is equal to 90. And that works. So what is the solution? N equals 10. And that's it for this last sentence. So make sure you review those, and we'll do lots of practice in class with these concepts. Thanks for joining me.